Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Hugely helps out the channel. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, today's first story is from a throwaway account, which is titled, My Proposal Was Nothing Like I Wanted. Hi everyone, this is my first time posting on Reddit. Also, I'm on mobile. Apologies in advance. As the title says, I, 22 female, just had a proposal that was nothing like I wanted. This actually happened a few hours ago and I'm not sure what to do. For about eight months, my boyfriend, 23 male, and I have been ring shopping and talking about getting married. For some background, I never wanted a wedding for various reasons. He didn't really care, so we never planned to have one. On the other hand, I really, really wanted a romantic and sweet proposal. I've wanted this since I was little, and it's the only engagement and wedding thing I really cared about. My boyfriend knows all of this. We've been together for five years and have talked about it time and time again. Well, today, around seven, when we were sitting on his front porch steps after just pressure washing the driveway, he says he had to use the restroom. I'm still sitting on the steps and he comes back with an engagement ring. He just sits beside me and opens it. To be completely honest, I was really confused on why he was showing me. He said something like, well, put it on. And then I realized this was his way of proposing. Long story short, although I was trying to act happy, I guess I couldn't hide the look on my face. He kept asking if I was okay and I kept having to reassure him I was. In reality, I wanted to cry. I just didn't want to seem like a complete jerk for being upset. The ring was perfect, but I just couldn't keep a smile on my face. The sad part is, is I had to leave about five minutes later to go home because I have to wake up for work at 5 a.m. So I just left without giving him a clear answer. To be honest, I don't remember what I said. He called me when I was driving back and I didn't answer. Finally, I got home and he called again. I was bawling to him. I hated it. I hated all of it. I told him I genuinely don't see how he thought it was okay. That we talked about it in detail. How I thought he was selfish for taking away the only thing I wanted. It was an awful conversation. A part of me feels like a jerk for complaining. Another part of me feels like I wanted to scream and yell. At the end of the conversation, he apologized over and over again. Saying he would redo it and he was just excited. He didn't want to seem like it was a big deal, so I don't know what to tell him to make him understand. Like I said, we've talked and talked about it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm torn and I'm not sure what to do. I'm really upset and I told him that. Quite honestly, it's making me look at him through another perspective and I'm not sure if I want to be with him anymore. What do I do? Do I stay with him? Do I make him redo the proposal? I'm so lost and I've never been this confused. I'll take any advice y'all can give me. I need to know what to say to him. And we're going to start with Big Rotten Tuna who says, I'm a guy and I'm going to validate your feelings from a slightly different perspective. Here's what I think. Regardless of the cause, whether he doesn't get it or doesn't care, this is a serious problem and one you should not ignore. I ignored exactly this sort of thing with my wife and it has haunted me. My wife is simply incapable of ever understanding or meeting my wants or needs. The result is that I've never really been happy in our marriage. It doesn't even matter why. The bottom line is that it isn't happening. It sounds like you communicated perfectly clearly and your boyfriend absolutely missed the mark. That's not a communication problem. It's a him problem and it's not one you can fix. I think it's one that should make you reflect on all the other times he has failed you and you explained it away as I did so many times, and reconsider whether he is the one you want to spend your life with. I'm all about it, says I, 46 male, was so nervous before my proposal to my wife, 48 female, of 20 plus years, together 31. It was all I could do to contain my excitement. We went to dinner at our favorite place, a little Greek place where we sat on a patio. I guess I was really apparently nervous because my voice was shaky just ordering, and she said, what is wrong? Do you have a ring in your pocket? That's when I dropped to a knee and asked her to be my wife. She started crying, I was crying. She swore she was joking and just guessed. OP, please find someone that is so excited to marry you. They can't contain their emotions. 
Coco says, what part of being dirty and sweaty after pressure washing the driveway says marriage proposal? He didn't even have to go all out. He could have planned a picnic somewhere or go to a nice dinner and then go for a walk somewhere nice and propose. At the very least, you want to be clean and have nice clothes to enjoy the moment. I don't know if you should stay with him or not. You just need to think about the relationship. To me, you are too young and marrying someone you met as a teenager. You're going to be very different people soon, or you are already different people. Hope you replied saying thank you so much. This is what I wanted to say. I was disgusting, tired, all of the things you don't want to be. Again, thank you. Friday 180 says you're both way too young and immature to get married. Him didn't propose the way you wanted. You for behaving like the world has come to an end over something really frivolous. You both have long lives ahead of you. 20 years from now, you'll either be laughing about this or secretly embarrassed. And one more from Jizzle who says, here's another opinion for you. You're sitting together on the porch and you're feeling tired and dirty after an afternoon of hard work. He looks at you and is overcome with love and at that moment, you could not be any more beautiful to him and he realizes that he wants to spend the rest of his life with you. You are perfect. Perhaps it was a proposal from the heart. Sometimes I feel like these over-the-top romantic gestures are nowhere as meaningful as the moment in time when you made his heart skip and he just knew you were the one for him. So then OP comes in with the update which says the comments were very back and forth so to speak. Because of this, I did want to address some general questions I saw a lot of but was not able to respond to. 1. I didn't want a wedding due to the huge expenses. I have 21 first cousins. There is no possible way I could invite them all. Or invite only a few. Also, I don't like being the center of attention. We plan to elope or have a courthouse wedding with just us. 2. I didn't expect this elaborate Disneyland-esque type of proposal. I wanted something thought out and meaningful. I had some things I didn't want. I didn't want it at a restaurant or in a crowded space. Public spaces were fine, just not hugely crowded ones. For example, I suggested a local art gallery or the botanical gardens. I also suggested a picnic by a local lake or something like that. I spelled this out very clearly to him. I genuinely don't know what else I could have said. I probably missed several talking points, so if you have any more questions, let me know. I am really really bad at talking about things in person. I don't like confrontation and usually if I care a lot about it, I cry, no matter how I feel. Also, we only see each other twice a week due to having conflicting schedules. So I text him what I thought and why I was hurt. I stated it honestly and tried to keep emotion out of it. I told him I wasn't expecting something extraordinary, but I did expect it to be thought out and special all the same. After talking to him some, I decided it was best if we put our entire relationship on pause, not just the engagement. Him proposing like that was like a shock. Looking back on it now, he hardly had any emotion, no excitement, no love, nothing. He didn't even ask me. That's what hurt the most. I felt like plan B. I realized, and the comments definitely helped, that no matter what I did, he wouldn't return the gesture. Several people have asked what I've done for him. I did most of his college academic work. I drove three hours twice to unlock his keys out of the car. I drove his mum to ER four times. I've babysat his nephew more times than I can count. I've cleaned his room and did his laundry when he had to work six days in a row. Every family event he's had, I've brought food and helped set up. Not to mention birthdays and Christmases. The stupid part is, is that I love doing these things and I was too blind to see that I could hardly get a date in return. I didn't add any of this yesterday because I guess I was upset and didn't want to acknowledge it. The feeling sucks. I've told one person he gave me 90% of what I needed and wanted, but to be honest, that was a lie and I was telling myself that. Our everyday lives were great, but there were too many things that we just swept under the rug. One commenter stated that he's probably with me because it gave him an easy ride through life. I completely agree. A lot of people said I was too immature to get married. You are right, but I don't think I ever want to put myself through this again. So it doesn't matter. I'm heartbroken, but I'm okay. A supportive parent and I'm in my last semester for my masters. It's going to be weird being alone for the first time since I was 16, but it's life. I appreciate every comment and suggestion everyone made, even the ones that called me out. Y'all have a good one. The thing that I found really strange about the proposal and stuff is that it wasn't even really a proposal. Is that he just sort of handed over the ring and said put it on and 
that's kind of the end of it. Knowing, you know, her wants and needs and the amount of times in this one story that it was sort of said that they have something in mind for it. Pretty much already planned it out in some ways for him. I found the comment at the end, you know, about sort of like maybe being overwhelmed in that moment with love and excited to do it. So they just done it on the spot. And whilst I think, yeah, maybe possibly, but at the same time, wouldn't you still do, you know, will you marry me? At least say those words, not just go, put it on. <laughs> but what do you guys make of this one? What do you think was going on? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story comes from Broken and Confused 8, who says my husband drained our accounts and wants to kick the kids and I out of the house in a week. Hi, they told me in r slash relationships that this is illegal and you guys would have advice. We're in Ohio. I need a divorce lawyer. On Wednesday, I bought him a fucking Christmas present. On Thursday, I found out he gave me an STI. On Friday, he's admitted he's been cheating. Yesterday, he drained our accounts. He says I need to be out of the house by Christmas Eve. We have four kids, eight, six, five, and two. I haven't worked since the eldest was born. Our relationship has been bad since before my youngest daughter was born. We hadn't meant to get pregnant. This week, I tested positive for an STI. I investigated, confronted him, and he admitted it. We had a huge fight. He stormed out of the house. Yesterday, my credit card was in decline at the grocery store, and I couldn't get cash. He's emptied all of our accounts. I was in charge of the bills and finances. I know exactly how much was in our checking, savings, and money market account. He's changed his password for his 401k. He didn't respond to my frantic texts all day, but just sent me an email saying I had a week to get myself and my kids out of his house, and I had better go get a job or go back to my parents if I expect to feed them. We bought the house together before the kids were born, and I paid half of the down payment. I have no money or credit card, so I can't even get a lawyer. I'm sitting here, staring at a Christmas tree, crying and wondering if I'll have to return my children's presents for food. I have no idea how this happened. I live two hours away from my family, so even if I get a job, I'd have to pay for daycare. Should I sell my wedding and engagement rings? Do I make a resume and apply for a job in my old field, accounting, or just get a job at Starbucks or McDonald's? Can he do this? And um, we have an update to this post as well. And basically all the comments under this one was legal advice about getting an attorney and getting things in order that he can't kick you out of the house and you know stay there as long as you are safe to do so. Get in contact with your family members, let them know of the situation and let them help you because I'm sure they would want to. And all in all, what an absolute scumbag. Kicking out not only his wife, but four kids, an eight-year-old, six, five, and two, and just trying to just kick them out like that, draining the money that they need. Holy shit. But we're going to move straight on to that update because I'm real curious to know what OP did with that advice. So OP comes in and says, first, I want to say that I logged out of this account that evening and didn't come back until now, and I was blown away by all the people offering food, gift certificates, or just goodwill, and I started crying again. I will respond to each of you individually. So to recap, my soon-to-be ex is a cheating ass and he panicked and tried to erase his family. The update. This all happened on a Sunday, so there wasn't a lot I could do right then. I put the kids to bed and called my mum and cried. Then I called my mother-in-law, who was horrified. My in-laws came over that night with $200 in cash and a check for much more. My father-in-law didn't say much but he did fix my bathroom door which is how he shows affection and muttered that he would fix this i opened a new checking account at a new bank thanks for this advice with a check my in-laws gave me i opened a new credit card in my name my mother deployed a niece to help with childcare for the next week i called in a lot of child mining favors and was with the cash my in-laws gave me i was able to pay for the babysitter while i worked this out I met with two divorce attorneys. Both of them told me about what you had said, that he was legally screwed. I chose one and we set the process in motion to get emergency hearing, but by Tuesday, my old checking account had most of the money back and my husband was asking to talk. 
On the advice of my lawyer, I took half of the checking account money and put it in my new bank and kept records of everything. I pulled our credit reports. He has over $40,000 in credit card debt. I also found out that he received a raise last year and funneled this money out of our shared accounts. I would have figured this out when I did our taxes and this led him to panicking and trying to erase us. Keep in mind, this asshole gave me gonorrhea. I am an accountant by trade and I'm afraid of credit card debt, the way some girls are afraid of spiders, so I was horrified about this. But my lawyer thinks it's likely that he have this debt on his own, as my name isn't on it, and it seems that most of it was spent on his side piece. We have started mediation, which he agreed to when he realized that he would need to pay for both of our divorce attorneys. My goal, which my lawyer thinks is reasonable, is to ask for alimony until I either remarry, not likely, or my two-year-old is in school full-time, and to have a reasonable amount of child support until she's 18, and then we'll split college costs for all of them. When all the kids are in school, I can concentrate on getting back to work. I also plan to sell the house and buy a small house in a less elite section of town. The kids can share rooms and I can live mortgage-free. So I'm heartbroken and diseased, but there's also an incredible weight that has been lifted from me. Our marriage has been bad for so long and I didn't even realize how unhappy I was and how absent my husband was. It took my five-year-old almost a week to realize that daddy was gone. And I got to admit, I had a few tears on this one reading that very start of that update, the family rallying round OP to help her. The mother-in-law who was horrified and the, the father-in-law who fixed the bathroom door showing his love in different ways and saying he would fix this. Niece coming over to help with childcare. Absolutely wonderful support. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's have a cheeky little story, shall we? And our next story comes from Content Profession 63 who says, Am I the asshole for refusing to buy my fiance a gaming laptop for a few grand after he told me to find a real job? My fiance, male 37, and I, female 30, have started living together six months ago. I own a house and he moved in with me. I run online businesses from home, which allows me to live rather comfortably. A month after moving in, he's quit his job saying how much he hated it and he's going to try and do Twitch streaming for a living. I'm all for following your passion, so I was supportive, although surprised at the turn of events. I'm in financial position to support us both, but it felt off. Anyway, nothing happened with his Twitch channel. Sure, he's gaming all day, but hasn't bothered to even try to create an account. He just games for pleasure. It's been seven months. I've had conversations with him suggesting he finds work, but he keeps telling me that I'm unsupportive and he needs time. He wants us to buy a bigger house together, but I said that I'm fine with my current one and that since he doesn't have a job, I don't want to get a mortgage and be left with paying everything. And he told me that if I found a real job, I wouldn't have financial problems. We had a massive argument that night. Now he's been hinting at needing a new gaming laptop, which costs a few grand, and I've been ignoring it, so he asked outright for me to buy it for his birthday. I told him no, that my fake job doesn't cover new laptops, and he got really pissed at me, telling me I'm selfish and ruining his career. Granted, I can't afford to buy it, but he really hurt me saying my business is not a real job, despite me working my ass off. Am I the asshole for not buying him a new laptop? Now, there's no way you're going to be the arsehole in this situation. The guy's pretty much sponging off you. Has the audacity to call your job not a real job and then wants to use the benefits of your job to get a new laptop. Hell no. And there was a part of this at the start where he just randomly quit his job. So he must have known that you're going to be supporting him through it and said he wanted to be like a Twitch streamer. And... It almost sounded like OP in some ways wasn't totally against it to begin with if he put some effort into it, but it sounds like he didn't even bother. He just started gaming and doing nothing with it. He had an opportunity, which many people would absolutely put their everything in to do, but they can't because they've got full-time jobs themselves. But he had that opportunity by the sounds of it, a very small one, but he could have made the effort to do it. And, and I know the success rate is very, very low, but it was the opportunity but absolutely not the asshole. But Bordstein says, you sound intelligent. 
Is the D that good for all that BS? <laughs> not the arsehole. Holmes says not the arsehole, wow. So he saw you make money with your own businesses and decided that you can be a sugar mama while he follows his dream of being a professional gamer. Yeah, 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 you know what? No. You have a real job, he has no job and now he's going through some early midlife crisis trying to be some edgy famous gamer. Sorry, but he sounds like he's 19. He'll be 40 soon. He needs a real job, not you. Manga Rubu says and quotes, I'm selfish and ruining his career. And then says, lol, what career? Not the arsehole. I'm a straight woman, but can I be your new boyfriend? You sound like you are carrying all the weight here. And instead of being happy for you, or even feeling lucky and grateful for just being able to fuck around for seven months and have zero consequences, this dude has become spoiled. Does he do chores around the house at least? Show some form of appreciation. And one more from Ali Mack who says, not the arsehole, this has to be fake, right? Adults have to support themselves financially or bring something to the table, like childcare or caregiving or homemaking. That balances them staying at home and not working. You haven't said that he devotes time and energy to shopping, meal planning, vacuuming and dusting, doing the laundry and making your home a comfortable and peaceful place. If he is just sitting like a lump in front of the computer while you feed him and attend to his needs like you are his mum and he is 12, then this is a big red flag that he is never going to be a partner you deserve. Give him the legal notice you need to give him to leave. 30 days or 60 days, tell him this is not working for you anymore. You were originally attracted to a functional adult, not a needy child. Now, what would you do if you found yourself in OP situation? Perhaps you have before. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below if you have a moment of your time, of course. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today, getting involved in the stories. Your love, support, and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you for being awesome and being involved. If you'd like to get involved further, you can go to at Mark Narrations over on Twitter. Get involved over there, posting pictures of Poppy and all that usual jazz. <laughs> so come get involved and just thank you again. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care. Much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast, milk and eggs, brush my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that today.